to lecture three. This is Semantics Pragmatics, and this is Dr. Fahad bin Dhesh speaking to you again. Uh, in our previous lecture, lecture two, we spoke about semantic um, relations, correct? We spoke about semantic relations. We spoke about synonyms, antonyms, and their likes. Today, however, we're going to move into um, another semantic topic. Today, we're going to speak about semantic features. Semantic features. Okay. Now, by features, we can mean or refer to component. Component. We would know that uh, in a few minutes in this class. Okay. So, one helpful approach to study meaning, like we said, semantics and pragmatics both relate to meanings. So, one helpful approach to study meaning could be the means or could be by the means of accounting for the oddness. The oddness that we experience when we read sentences. Okay. When I read an example like, the hamburger ate the boy. The hamburger ate the boy. That sentence actually has a subject, a verb, and an object, right? The hamburger ate the boy. So at the semantic, at the syntax level, it's correct. It has a subject, a verb, and an object. Or a noun phrase, verb, noun phrase. So at the grammar level or syntax, syntax, syntax level, it is actually correct. But when we look at the meaning, it's kind of odd, correct? The hamburger ate the boy. Hmm, it's kind of weird. How about the table? The table listens to the radio. I don't think most of you would agree with me. That's a good sentence. It is grammatical, though, but it's not a good sentence. When we say the horse is reading the newspaper, hmm, it's still kind of odd, right? Okay. They are grammatically correct, but they're semantically odd. So there is a problem here in these sentences. There is a problem. The oddness that we can find in these sentences do not or does not derive from their syntactic structure. According to the grammar rules, these are just well-formed sentences. So, they are good in syntax, but they're kind of odd with semantics. What's the problem here? The hamburger ate the boy. The hamburger actually cannot eat anything. It's not a human being, right? So, if we change the order of the sentence and say, the boy ate the hamburger, it is an acceptable sentence. So, what was the problem with the hamburger? The component of the noun hamburger must be significant, significantly different from those of the noun boy. They're different. Hamburger is different than a boy. A boy can eat. A hamburger cannot eat. So, only one of these words can be used as the subject of the verb eat or ate in the past. The kind of noun that can be the subject of this verb must denote or represent an entity that is acceptable or capable of eating. A boy is capable of eating. A hamburger is not capable of eating. Same thing with the previous sentences. A table is not capable of listening to anything. But a boy is, for example. Same 
with the horse that was reading a newspaper. He cannot, or that horse cannot read a newspaper. There is a problem with the verb itself that is reading. Okay. So whenever we deal with uh, verbs, we need to determine the crucial semantic features that any noun must have in order to be used as a subject of a particular verb. In the previous example, we had the verb ate, right? Ate or eat in the simple form. Such an element may be as general as animate being. If you are not of this or if the subject is not an animate being, that subject cannot eat. So the hamburger is not animate being. It cannot eat. A boy, on the other hand, can. We can then use this idea to describe part of the meaning of words as either having a plus feature or minus feature. So we can say, um, for example, the noun boy is plus animate and the noun hamburger is minus animate. Minus animate. So whenever we come across a sentence that has the verb eat, for example, we know for sure that the subject for that verb must be plus animate. Must be plus animate. Makes sense? Because if it's minus animate, like a table, for example, it cannot eat. It cannot eat or drink anything. Okay. We call this idea Componential, componential, uh, componential analysis. It's coming from component. Okay. It's coming from component. The term componential analysis is a semantic approach, which means that word meaning can be described in terms of distinct components. Many of these components or features are um, binary. Binary means plus and minus, plus and minus. Okay. Components are qualities embedded in any word's meaning, like the ones seen in a dictionary definitions. Let's define a dog, for example. It's a mammal, right? It's a mammal. Uh, and the dictionary also can tell us that a dog is domesticated. So it's a domesticated animal. Also, another dictionary can describe dog as carnivore. Carnivore. Min akli luhum. Okay? So we know that a dog is actually a mammal is actually domesticated and it is a carnivore. All these descriptions coming from the definition of a dog can be the distinct components or distinct features of the word dog. Okay? Or of the, of the noun dog. Okay. So the dog is actually plus mammal, plus domesticated, and plus carnivore. Carnivore. Make sense? Okay. Dog is actually plus mammal, plus domesticated, and plus carnivore. How about wolf? Wolf. It is a mammal, so that means, that means it's plus mammal. It's minus domesticated. You cannot keep a, a wolf in your house as a, a bet. You cannot like play with your kids or anything like that. So it's minus domesticated. But it is plus carnivore because it can eat meat. Okay? So we distinguish between nouns through semantic features. Semantic features. These, when I say mammals, plus or minus mammal, 
uh, plus or minus domesticated and plus or minus carnivore. These are not um, typical features, okay? There is no one typical list that will go with all nouns, okay? They actually change for every noun. But there is a typical, kind of most commonly used list um, that we sometimes uh, come across when we uh, read about this uh, type of analysis or semantic features. These are animate, so plus or minus animate, plus or minus human, plus or minus male, plus or minus adult. Okay? Okay. So, this approach or this analysis is used actually to analyze the meaning of certain types of nouns in terms of semantic features. So, this approach helps us understand the meaning, okay, of the nouns like boy and hamburger and horse and table in terms of their semantic features, semantic features, okay. Coming next is a table. This table would summarize to us uh, one way of uh, doing this kind of analysis. Okay? All right. So, how would you describe a table, for example, based on the four common features I explained earlier? We said animate, human, female, and adult, for example. All right. So, is the table animate? It's not. So, I should always say it's minus animate. Is it a human? Definitely not. So, it's minus a human. Is the table female or even male? No. It does not have a gender. So, it's minus female, for example, in this table. Is it adult or is it young? Like non-adult. It's actually neither. So it's minus adult. Adult and female and human and animate are none, are not features used with tables. Like none of these features uh, uh, are good, or none of these features is good to go and describe table. That's why we see table or we can describe table according to this table as minus animate, minus a human, minus female, minus adult. All right. How about horse? Horse. Horse is actually an animate, or it could be it could be an animate creature. All right. So it's plus animate, plus animate. Can we describe horse as a human? No. So it's minus human, minus human. Is a horse uh, male or female? Hmm. The horse that we refer to here is actually minus female, minus female. Okay. Is it adult? Yes, we're not speaking about a baby horse, all right? We speak about uh, an adult horse. So, a horse is plus animate, minus human, minus female, plus adult. Okay. How about boy? Boy is definitely animate, so plus animate. It's a human, human being. So, it's plus human. It's minus female because it's male, but also it's minus adult because a boy is non-adult. It's young. It's not adult. If we compare boy and a man, we can see that they are identical in everything except for the adulthood, okay, or the adjective adult. We notice that a man is adult and a boy is minus adult. So, plus adult for a man, minus adult for a boy. 
when we bring a girl along, it is actually plus animate, plus human, plus female, minus adult. A woman is actually plus animate, plus human, plus female, and plus adult. So, why do we need such a table? Okay, we need it actually so we can understand what subject would be appropriate for a certain verb. Like what subject would be appropriate for a certain verb. Okay, if for example we would say um, so and so or blank is marrying a handsome man a handsome man okay can we say a table is marrying a handsome man no because we actually for marrying in this sentence in particular we if some if, if there is a subject that is marrying a handsome man we need that subject to be plus animate plus human, right? We also need that subject to be plus female, plus female, okay? Why? Because that subject is marrying a handsome man. Now, so we said it's plus animate, plus human, plus female that will uh, make make uh, or give us two candidates a girl or woman right but can a girl really marry a handsome man no because we need plus adult so by that for that subject in that sentence blank is marrying a handsome man we actually need a woman uh, we need a plus animate, plus human, plus female, and plus adult, because only adults can get married. All right? So with that, we actually get to choose women, the noun women, as the best candidate for uh, this sentence. A woman is marrying a handsome man. Okay? All right. Um, let me look at this table and maybe pick up another sentence. Um, blank is a brother to Sarah. Blank is a brother to Sarah. Now, what do I need to put in this blank to make this sentence semantically acceptable? Okay, can I say a table is a brother to Sarah? Not really. How about a horse? Definitely not. All right, let me try boy. So that boy is a brother to Sarah. That would make sense. So in that blank, we actually need plus animate, according to this table, plus human, all right, if it's a brother, it cannot be plus female. It should be minus female, okay? And um, we actually, because it's Sarah could be a girl or a woman in this case, it could be plus or minus adult. In this case, we'll just put plus minus adult. Both of them are correct. Make sense? All right. Let's move on to um, this slide. What's the example here? The blank is reading the newspaper. The blank is reading the newspaper. Okay. So here we can uh, categorize cat uh, we can characterize the semantic features that is required in a noun 
in order for it to appear as the subject of a particular verb, like we did in the table. Okay, so for a subject to be able to read the newspaper, do we care if it's, for example, in the sentence, um, a human? Of course, yeah, it should be a human. Should it be a male or female? We don't really care. Should it be adult or non-adult? Well, both can read, right? So, another way to do it is actually to minimize the features to what we really need, okay? So, in this blank, for example, we only need a human, okay, to um, fill in the gap. A human can be the man. The man is reading the newspaper. The boy. The boy can, is reading the newspaper. The girl is reading a newspaper, okay, or a woman. But cannot be the horse is reading the newspaper or the table. That would be kind of odd weird right so we notice that um, when we learn grammar alone or when we learn syntax alone it will not protect us from speaking a odd language Okay, we will not, in other words, we will not be able to speak naturally if we only focus on syntax. We need more than syntax in order to be natural, okay, in, in order to be fluent in our language. So, here is when we need semantics to be added to our English knowledge or to our uh, language knowledge. We need semantics because with semantics we can actually protect ourselves or save ourselves from a lot of uh, embarrassment, okay? Because you sometimes can argue that you are grammatically good or grammatically correct in that sentence, but your sentence will not mean anything or it will not mean anything that is um, natural okay so for example if you want to say the horse is reading the newspaper I would say that 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 is only possible in a cartoon the horse yeah is reading a newspaper in the cartoon right but not in reality because the horse is not a human and we need a human in order to um, um, have a subject that is able of reading the newspaper okay so this approach okay or this way of analysis would help predict uh, which noun makes uh, which noun uh, make this sentence semantically odd or semantically acceptable. If it's table, that is reading the newspaper, horse or hamburger, all of them would make subject, will make uh, odd and weird subjects. All right? If it's a human, no matter what type of human that is, plus, plus or minus adult, plus or minus uh, female, okay? Um, it would be acceptable in this situation, all right? So, it could be common. I hear this a lot, like, oh, we only need to learn a language. We only need vocabulary and grammar. Well, here is an example. You actually have a very good grammar when you said the hamburger ate the boy, okay? You had the vocabulary. You said the hamburger, that's a word in English. You said the boy, that's a word in English. But you actually uh, did not produce something natural. Why? Because you need semantics. You need meaning. So it's not about uh, saying something 
uh, grammatically correct, but you need to be meaningful. And this brings us to the idea of semantics and pragmatics, like both of them are trying or helping you as a speaker to produce something meaningful, something meaningful, okay? All right, uh, this approach, okay, or this way of analysis is not um, actually the best way of doing semantics, okay? It's still kind of a start of analyzing uh, vocabulary, all right? So it is only a start in analyzing the conceptual components of word meaning, but it's not without problems. Uh, we notice that this approach or this way of analysis can help us with kind of basic nouns like, you know, animals, human being, um, tables, right, TV, hamburgers, and, st and stuff like that. Um, so it would help us to analyze uh, things that we, uh, we kind of run into in our daily life, okay? Uh, these nouns that contains features, okay, something physical, something you can touch and explain. But sometimes we run into abstract nouns, abstract nouns that would be um, difficult for us to describe according to um, semantic features. Think, um, for example, about the noun advice. What's an advice? Is it human? Is it animate? Adult? Male? Female? Is it a mammal? Carnivore? Domesticated? It's like none of these features would actually be accepted in this situation because it's more of an abstract like an advice you don't really hold an advice or carry an advice with you so it's more of an abstract and here comes the problem with the semantic features um, approach what's a threat hmm. a threat you cannot describe that with semantic features what's a warning and I included here a warning sign. How would you explain a warning using semantic features? So the semantic features way, okay, um, is not actually, um, it's not actually the end of understanding meaning. It's still kind of one approach that is successful in describing um, uh, physical nouns, all right, but it's not the best way to explain um, all the nouns. So this is one of the problems with the semantic features. Okay, um, I hope that uh, today we learned something useful. We learned uh, the semantic features and uh, how sometimes we need to explain the uh, word um, through the semantic features in order to uh, uh, make sense to, the, to other people that I chose this word and not that word. The hamburger ate the boy did not really work for us, right? The, uh, the table that was listening to the radio did not work for us. Some uh, learners might ask you, like, why you're saying uh, this sentence is not correct? The table is listening to radio. You would explain that through semantic features. You might say, well, the table uh, cannot listen because it's not animate. It's not animate. We need animate in order to have, uh, in, uh, in order to fill uh, that uh, subject and make that sentence uh, natural and meaningful. Okay? With that, I come to the end of this um, uh, lecture, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on, the, on our next meeting on the lecture four. Have a good day.